What's up everyone, my name is Nick and I am a super nice guy. And today we'll be creating a simple mobile menu. This will be a typical side menu found in a mobile application. It will animate in from the left to the right when tapping on a menu icon. It will also be built to scale to account for any potential future UX changes that might come about. Okay, let's take a look at what we're going to build. This is a pretty standard menu that will include some other screens to jump off to for the user, an avatar with an ability to edit for some extra personality, a view profile link, and the ability to log out. It's really split up into two parts, a header and the menu items. It's also worth noting that the width of this component should be less than that of the screen that it will be laying on top of. That's just for this specific style of menu where it will leave an open area that a user can tap off of to close the menu. And lastly, these list items here will be set up in auto layout so that you can quickly come in here and add new items if you need them. All right, well, let's do it. Okay, so what we have here are all of the parts that we'll need to build this menu component. We have a list of icons here, which I got from the material icon pack. I'll link in the description below. We have an avatar container. We have a simple textile for a name and for a link and for the menu item as well. I've also just gone ahead and created this really basic app screen that's just supposed to stand in for whatever's gonna live below the menu. I've just set this up as a typical iPhone 13 mini here, 375 by 812. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna need is a way to open the menu from the app screen. So I'm gonna use this hamburger icon here and I'm gonna press Shift A to create an auto layout and create this container. I'll just quickly add a fill here and it's white by default or if you have a style you can set it there. Maybe give it eight border radius so it's a little more approachable. And then perhaps we'll just want a simple drop shadow and I'll just adjust some of the numbers here to something like that. Let's also just begin to think about the padding and the distance that we want elements to fall on within these screens. And I'll do something like 16 and 48. The reason we'll put this a little further down is to account for utility bars. So this is what we have here, an app screen with a menu icon to open the menu. So now we need the menu. My dog is really licking herself intensely in the background, so hopefully that's not coming through. So there's a couple different ways we can go about this. We can start with the container or an element inside. Let's just go ahead and start with the container so we can see in a nice, neat little way what we're making and where it will go. So we're just gonna wanna draw a frame here that's the same height as the device, so 812. And then for the width, I'm gonna do something like eight times 32 or eight times 34. This way I can stay in my eight pixel grid system and that should work perfectly for our purposes. Next we'll start with the header section and so we're gonna need an avatar and a name and a link underneath. For the name and the link, I'll just select those both and press Shift A and I'm gonna wanna space them. Actually zero works fine here, so keep them just like that. And next let's work on creating this edit button for this avatar. I'm actually gonna say that I want this edit icon here to live in a container that's about 24 pixels. I'm just gonna create a light purple for that. And so the icon that's gonna go inside it, we're actually gonna probably want this to be really small and say 12. And so this way I know that the element is 24 by 24 and we still have some nice padding around the icon here. I'll just Option Command G to put those into a frame and I will call this frame Edit. And now we can bring this over here in front of the avatar and just place it in the bottom right. So I just quickly pressed Option D and S to move it to the right and to the bottom. Next, I'll probably want to select on this purple ellipse here and just give it a stroke, which will be white, and maybe bump it up to two. What that will do is from a further distance, add some separation between what's happening here, the image and the edit icon. 
Next, let's just go ahead and drop an image in here because that's kind of a super fun part and we'll make this thing feel a little bit more real. I'm just going to pick this really cool dude I found somewhere in here. If you just open up Unsplash and tap on portrait, you get a lot of these sweet images here. There we go, perfect. Even though this image definitely isn't me, I'm just gonna go ahead and make his name Nick. And then below that, I know I want this to be view profile. And because view profile is more of a link, we're gonna wanna treat that a little bit differently and I'll make that purple. I actually noticed that this icon is not a black in my design system and so I'm gonna just go ahead and make that full black there. Well, we are on our way. I'm just gonna select all these items and make sure we're spaced out according to our eight pixel grid system. So I'll go 40 from the top. I'm gonna need to group the avatar and this edit icon so I can distribute them all in a nice neat little container here. So I'll select both of these and press option command G and we're gonna call this avatar. And then select the two items here, that and the text below it, auto layout, shift A, and then center align those. And now I can select this whole thing and press option H and you will see it moved it over a little bit. It just centered things horizontally. Cool, so now we're ready to sort of move on to the menu items. First, I'm going to create a divider line here, which is just one pixel in height and it's the full width. And I've just made this a pretty light gray. Maybe I can go one shade lighter. It doesn't need to be super visible. It's just adding some more accents and spacing to help with the separation of content. All right, with that in there, let's just keep it in our spacing system and I will put that 24 pixels. That should be plenty from the header and our header is complete. Next, we're going to populate the actual menu items with these icons that I mentioned earlier. So first, what we're gonna to need to do is create the menu item, which is the icon plus the text. So if we select both of those and press shift A, I've made them 12 pixels from each other and I think that's a good distance. And then we'll make sure that those items are vertical aligned centered. Now that we have that guy all finished, we can pull it over and plop it in. I'm gonna hold alt and select the frame and bring up these smart guides and make sure it's 16 pixels from the left for this specific design. And coming over to this element here, I will hover over and make sure we are 24 pixels. So then we have a nice visual rhythm of 24 to 24. Next, what I'm gonna do is think about how far I want these to be spaced out from one another. I think we'll just stick with 24 because we have plenty of room to work with here and it will be in line with this visual rhythm. So with that selected, I will select both of these items and press Shift A and 24 is now built into the auto layout. I need to add a few more items but before I do that, I'm actually gonna rename these two items here. If I select them both, press enter to select the children and press command R, I'm gonna name this menu item. So they're both menu item. And now what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different items. We have two already, so let's quickly press into the auto layout and command D to add five more. So one, two, three, four, five. And now that should be everything we need. Now what we'll do since these are built with auto layout is we can just drag in this icon and snap it in to that horizontal alignment and just delete the first one. If you already have icons set up in your design system, you can also toggle them out easily with this menu here. And so I can select the same icon that was over there it really doesn't make a difference, just whatever's easiest for you to swap out these icons in a way that makes sense. So we'll pull them in and we'll just do that for these last remaining pieces here. And now we'll need to rename them. So for this bell, I was thinking notifications. For the message, I was thinking messages. The gift was gonna be refer a friend. The credit card was payments. The star was rewards. The cog wheel will be settings and this back arrow will be log out. So we have everything coming together nicely. You can certainly build it this way, but the way I'm going to assemble these will make sure that we don't have to keep adjusting these horizontal lines every time we might need to add new menu items. 
And actually, before I go any further, I'm gonna pull log out out of that menu and just separate it contextually. So for the user, it's easy to see sort of more sitemap items or things that get you further into the app and then things that leave the app. So I've just alt dragged that first horizontal line here and then I'm going to make it 24 and then separate the login item by 24 pixels as well. Okay, now what we want to do is when we duplicate some of these items, it retains the spacing and pushes everything down. The tricky part with auto layout sometimes is that when you have a full width item and an item that's in further from that full width item, sometimes they don't play nicely. So if I just selected both of these and press shift A, the auto layout wants them to be along this same edge here. So if I undo that and go back. So what I need to do, since I know I want these to be 16 pixels from the edge here, I will put all of these in another auto layout and press shift A. I will slide them flush to the left side of the edge here. And then I will come in here and set 16 padding for the left hand side only. I will also want to just zero out the rest of these values here since we already have spacing that we manually set up. So now just 16 on the left and zero everywhere else. And we'll have to do the same thing over here with the log out since it's a separate item, 16, and then go zero, 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 and then put that all the way to the left. Now we can select all of these items, press shift A for another auto layout, set it to 24, and there we go. We have the full width divider line, and then we have the menu item set 16 apart from the left edge. Now, if we select any of these and we duplicate, it's pushing down the full divider line and that log out button. This is the part where designing for scalability is important because the product might launch with this many items, but if we design it in a way that you can easily add and remove items, it will just make this component much more flexible. All right, and lastly, the thing that we're gonna want to do is make this thing a prototype. So we'll come over into the prototype tab and we'll select this menu icon here and click the little plus and drag over a wire into this component. So now what we wanna do is on click, open overlay. Actually, you know what? I'm seeing this right now, open overlay frame six. We don't really like that. We're going to press command R on this and name it menu. So now going back into this wire, clicking on the wire there, on click open overlay menu. We can click top left here or select it in the drop down. We want to close when clicking outside. We want to add a background behind overlay. And I like to set this a little darker to like 50%. And then we want a move in animation. So if it's set to instant or dissolve, that's not what we want. We want it to move in and click this arrow, which points to the right. Now let's see what that looks like. So if you just click on the play icon here, then we come over to the live prototype view and you'll see right away, the cursor is changing to a pointer. So we know there's an interactive element there. If we click on that, then we have the menu animate in from the left to the right. And we have this portion of the screen exposed still. So if we click outside, it will close that menu back to the left. All right, well now we've designed and animated a simple mobile menu. We've done it in a way that is set up for scalability for future changes, and we hooked it all together into a realistic prototype. If you got something out of this video, please remember to like and subscribe, and be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. That concludes my video today, so until next time, super nice guy out.